Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation. Selling Stock. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from Investopedia, when to sell a stock, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Sham Gad, updated March 12th. 2022. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, keeping in mind the two main categories of investments, fixed income like bonds, the equities like stocks, using tools such as, for example, mutual funds and ETFs often being used by individual investors, but we can also be purchasing and selling individual and bonds and stocks themselves. We're focused here on the stock side of things and specifically when to sell a stock. Theoretically, the ability to make money on stocks involves two key decisions, buying at the right time, selling at the right time. Buy low, sell high, that's my motto. So make a profit, uh, you have to execute both of these decisions correctly. Buying a stock is relatively easy, but selling it is usually a more difficult decision to make. So oftentimes when we're investing, we've got the money, we're investing and ready to do so and purchasing the stock is fairly easy process. Selling it can be a little bit more difficult to determine when we should sell it, what's the strategy we should be using, which stock should we be selling. So if you sell too early and the stock goes higher, you risk leaving gains on the table. If you sell too late and the, st and the stock plunges, you've probably missed your opportunity. What's an investor to do? So note that oftentimes individual investors are often there for the kind of like the long term. So if you're like saving for retirement, then you might not have as much difficulty because you might be using say mutual funds, for example, ETFs and putting your money in for the long haul. And then you're, you're gonna be looking at these concerns more often at the point in time that you've got to withdraw. But uh, especially if you're trying to get more of a short-term kind of gains, when should you enter into the market? When should you remove yourself? Oftentimes you would like to enter the market when there's a dip or something like that. So you could get a, a lower price to go in and then hopefully, and if you're in a long-term perspective, then you might you know write out more of a, of a long-term perspective. But if you're trying to get more of a short-term gains, then you're playing the ups and downs, the, the smaller peaks and troughs in uh, the market. And obviously you're gonna have to agonize a little bit more over what's the right time to be buying, what's the right time to be selling, trying to find the golden rule, buy low, sell high, which is actually hard to do in practice, of course. So many investors have trouble selling a stock and sometimes the reason is rooted in the innate human tendency toward greed. However, there are strategies that you can use to identify when it is and isn't a good time to sell. Selling a stock is hard. Here's an all too common scenario. So just realize obviously whenever you buy and sell stocks, no one is a genius. There's no, I mean, there's no one can read the market perfectly. So you're gonna make bad decisions. So you've gotta, you know, do your research, do the best you can. Try not to make your trades based on panic, but logical decisions. And then whatever happens, happens. You make some bad decisions as long as you made it, you know, consciously and not out of fear, then you just keep, you keep learning. So you buy shares of stocks at $25 with the intention of selling it uh, if it reaches $30, the stock hits $30 and you decide to hold out for a couple more dollars in gain. The stock reaches $32 and greed overcomes uh, rationality. Suddenly the stock price drops to $29. Uh, you tell yourself to just wait until it hits 30 again. This never happens. You finally succumb to frustration and sell at a loss when it hits $23. So clearly when things are on the upturn, our, our gut starts to say, hey, look, things are going good. Why would I sell now? I'm gonna miss out on the future gains. And notice that often comes out of fear, right? Well, if I sell now, I'm gonna be silly. People are gonna think I'm silly because I sold it before while the thing was, was spiking. But then if it goes back down, if it goes under, then we often sell at the low point, like the $23 in this example, once again, out of fear. Well, now we're on a downward trend. I've got to sell it at this point. I'm going to look, you know, it's going to look dumb if I don't sell it. I'm just wasting my money and time. So what you want to do is, is try to try to say a rational goal that's not based on uh, a fear and then try to execute uh, based on that. So in this scenario, it could be said that greed and emotion have overcome rational judgment. The loss uh, was $2 a share, but you actually might have made a profit of $7 when the stock hit its high. 
this paper losses might be better ignored than agonizing over, but the real question is the investor's reason for selling or not selling. To remove human nature from the equation uh, in the future, consider using a limit order, which will automatically sell the stock when it reaches your target price. So if you have a strategy that you think is sound going into it and you think that you might not be able to hold to that strategy, you might then make it execute automatically. So you won't have you won't even have to watch that stock go up and down. You'll get a notice when your sell order is placed. When should you sell? In general, there are some intrinsic reasons to sell a stock, i.e. reasons that are related to the stock itself and or the markets. So clearly, sometimes you might be saying, well, I have to sell because I need the money <laughs> or I need to sell because it's under like an IRA or something and I've got to I've got to take take distribute or something like that. But clearly, if you're trying to play the market, then you're trying to say, when should I sell in order to maximize my profits? So and that's, you know, that's a different question. So in addition, the investors may also have uh, ex extrinsic reasons to sell by extrinsic. We mean reasons that are related to the investors finances or lifestyle occasionally the sell decision may be triggered by a combination of intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Let's look at some intrinsic reasons or factors first. Intrinsic reasons to sell. So when the when the initial buying decision was a mistake. So most experienced investors may have encountered this situation at some point. You've watched this stock or more likely a meme stock uh, make phenomenal gains on a daily basis. So you finally decide to suspend your disbelief and recklessly put in a sizable buy order for the stock. So now we put in money. We don't think it's gonna, but just again, this is another act when you're trying to follow the market, you start to, you start to get moved by, by things that are emotional. It looks like an emotional thing here. Oh, think this doesn't make any sense to me, but look, this move is happening whatever i'm going to i'm going to go i'm going to go and i'd be stupid not to go into it at this point in time but but as soon as you do so you realize that you've probably made a mistake the best course of action in this case is to sell the stock even if it means taking a small loss on the trade and to avoid making the same mistake in the future resist the temptation to chase hot stocks that are running on fumes uh, as they may burn you financially so you, you would like to make decisions on sound, you know, financial or have some rationale other than this is a hot stock, you know, kind of thing generally. So when the price rises dramatically, selling a stock merely because it has risen dramatically uh, in price isn't always the best course of action. So obviously, if the price goes up, you're going to have an incentive to want to sell it at that point and take on your gains. So in some cases, the price gains may be justified by the company's underlying fundamentals. For example, its sales and or earnings may be growing faster than investors' expectations. But in other cases, the price may have posted exponential gains purely on speculation or due to other reasons such as taking rumors or a short squeeze. In such cases, the investor would be well served by doing some research to try and ascertain the reasons for the stock gains and depending on the findings, either sell the full position or sell part of the position and put in a stop order to sell the balance if it trades below a certain price. So if it spikes up, you might say, okay, why did it spike? Uh, should I, should I, what should I do at this point in time? You might do the research and say, well, do you think this is something that's reflected in the value of the stock that's gonna be sustainable or not? And then, and then you might say, well, if I, I might take some money out now, I might try to put a stop in case it starts to go back down. And if I see that decrease happening, then I sell it, you know, and still realize some of the gains at that point in time. If it keeps on spiking, then we ride, keep on going with the ride possibly. So the more that the stock short term gains contribute to your overall portfolio, the more critical the sell decision. For example, if you bought 1,000 shares of a biotech stock at $5 per share when your total portfolio was worth $25,000, that stock constituted 20% of your portfolio. Whoo! If after three months, that biotech stock a quarter drop, dropped on promising tri trial results, well, while the rest of your portfolio is unchanged, it would now account for 50% of your portfolio. In this situation, it might be prudent to sell some of your shares and book part of the profits. So now in that case, of course, 
because that stock spiked and it was already a substantial part of your portfolio, now you're heavily invested. You're, you're doing good because you've, you've got a gain on it, but now you're heavily invested in one company. You're not as diversified. So that would be another reason you would think to possibly readjust your position. When stock reaches your price target, have you ever owned a stock that has been down in the dumps for years, but suddenly has a new lease on life and is now trading at your original entry price? If you promised yourself that you would sell the stock if it ever came back to your buy price, dump it without hesitation. You shouldn't have been holding on to that loser for so long in the first place, but that's a subject for another time. Similarly, if a stock reaches a level that is traded at all too briefly in the past and you always thought that you would sell if it reached that price again or would consider selling part of your position rather than regret another missed opportunity, then not, why not? Not sell all of it because of the next point so when a stock trades at a technical inflection point so when a stock trades near and then breaks below a multi-year low it often pretends additional losses ahead in this case it may make sense to sell the stock as soon as the technical level is breached on the downside likewise if a stock breaks through a key resistance level on the upside it may signal more signs and a higher trading range for the stock, which means it might be advisable to sell part of the position rather than all of it. Technical, uh, technical analysts always watch stock price charts closely to identify other signals such as moving average crossovers. So when the fundamentals deteriorate, a stock's fundamentals may deteriorate when any number of reasons. So now you're looking at the, at the fundamentals behind the stocks looking at than the financials for example and that could happen because slowing earnings and or revenue growth increased competition higher costs and lower margins or simply valuation the first such signal of deterior deteriorating fundamentals may come from a company's quarterly earnings reports or sometimes from guidance ahead of an earnings report so obviously we're looking at stocks the investing in the stock is based in part on you know their earning potential right so if they're not hitting their goals that would not be good you would think for the stock price market reaction to negative news from a company such as an earnings miss or lowered forward guidance tends to be swift and une unequivocal uh, with stock likely to plunge by double digits in such cases the investor needs to determine whether the t deterioration in the stock's fundamentals is temporary or permanent since this is no easy task it might be preferable to sell and exit the position first then evaluate if it should be bought back later when a rival company issues bad news Often the problems affecting a specific sector may be highlighted when a uh, bellwether company in that sector reports an earnings miss. So if you're looking at a related company to the company that you're running in, that might be a signal that, uh, that the stock that you're holding could have similar issues because they're in the same sector. So if you own stock in a company that is that in the sector, consider selling it unless you are quite confident that your stock will not be affected by the sector's woes when the market looks wobbly this is no easy task and is certainly not a suggestion uh, to indulge in market timing but there are times when the broad market looks overextended so you know you don't want to be thinking well what's the market like all the time and get get too in the weeds on it but on the broad basis you're going to look at the the uh, trops and you know the, the ebbs and flow in the market overall and you get a sense of the overall direction at such times, it makes sense to, to cull the weaker names in your portfolio. In a financial earthquake, stocks of companies that have a heavy debt burden or a weak financial position might be the first to collapse. So notice when you're looking at stocks, oftentimes companies that are trying to grow are going to leverage their company. They're going to take on a lot more debt because they're trying to finance the purchase of equipment and so on so they can grow faster, which works great if the economy is doing well. But if there's a downturn in the economy, they're not going to be able to finance as well. And if they've over leveraged, they don't have the strong uh, cash position. That's going to be not bad. I mean, that's going to be bad in, in a downturn. Extrinsic reasons to sell. Now we're looking at the extrinsic reasons. Financial reasons. So obviously, if you need the money, 
This can include any number of reasons pertaining to the investor's finances. For instance, a stock may have gained so much in proportion to the rest of the portfolio, as in the example of the biotech stock mentioned earlier, that the investor may need to rebalance it to bring it back in balance. So you might be saying, okay, a stock did so well that now I'm, I'm way too heavily weighted in that one area. So you might want to sell in order to, to diversify. Or the investor might wish to sell a stock to book a loss for tax purposes. So tax planning plays a huge and other role in this whole thing. Another reason to sell stock could be because the investor needs to cash uh, to deploy in a competing investment such as real estate. Such financial reasons are uh, pretty potent ones to justify selling a stock. Lifestyle reasons. Lifestyle changes also present good reasons for selling a stock. Younger investors might consider selling all or part of their portfolio to make a down payment on a house or buy a car. Investors nearing retirement might sell stocks to wind down the equity part of their portfolios and reduce their risk exposure. Parents may also sell stocks in tax advantage plans earmarked for specific purposes such as their children's education combination of reasons in some cases this decision to sell a stock or stocks may be uh, precip precipitated by a combination of intrinsic and extrinsic factors for example let's say you lose your job because of corporate restructuring and are a few years from retirement you have been uneasy about the market's uh, elevated levels and historically high valuations so you're saying hey the market looks like it's been riding high for quite some time over overvalued possibly overheating for various reasons but you previously felt a little inclination to act upon it now however you would like to conserve your capital with the intention of using it in the business that you always dreamed of starting in this case your sell decision is justified by intrinsic reasons your lifestyle change as well as extrinsic ones market uh, elevated levels valuation so if the price of a stock that I hold plunges, should I sell it or buy more to, to average down? So now you, you got the stock went down in price. It really depends on a number of factors such as the kind of stock, your risk tolerance and investment objectives, amount of investment capital, etc. So if a stock goes down, you, you can react two ways, you know, typical two ways of acting. You might be saying, well, now I want to cut my losses at this point, or you might be saying, I'm going to double down on it because it's going to go I'm going to I'm going to regain I'm going to go back into it and obviously that'll be dependent on the circumstances in which case which one would be the way to go if the stock is speculative one and plunging because of a permanent change in its outlook then it might be advisable to sell it but if it is a blue chip that has suffered a temporary setback then averaging down is a strategy worth considering I like the long-term perspective for a stock in my portfolio, but I am nervous that it might fall in the short term. Is there an alternative to protect my downside instead of selling it? Consider a put option, which gives you the right to sell the stock at a specific price for a period of time. Put options aren't cheap, but neither is insurance. Can I sell a stock on the same day when I bought it? Yes as long as you don't make a habit of it. Otherwise, you might be considered a day trader. Day trading can result in substantial losses and is best left to experienced, well-capitalized traders. When I sell a stock, after how many days will I receive the proceeds? For most stocks, the standard period to receive the proceeds of a stock sale is two days. Uh, this is also known as the T plus two settlement period. So what's the bottom line? Any sale that results in profit is a good sale. Buy low, sell high, particularly if the reasoning behind it is sound. When a sale results in a loss with an understanding of why that loss occurred, it too may be considered a good sale. Selling is a poor decision only when it is dictated by emotion instead of data and analysis. And again, there's high emotion when you're watching the prices going up and down. So you want to you want to be trying to make your decisions not based on on just uh, emotions going either way out of basically fear fear of missing the gain fear of missing of of not cutting the losses but some kind of rational
decision-making process. So the key thing to remember is that once the sale decision has been made on the basis of thorough and rational research, the investor should neither look back nor experience seller's remorse. And again, this is typical with any kind of decision-making process. Oftentimes our mind is in the rear view mirror, looking at the last decision, analyzing it for no good reason, for the good decision, just agonizing over it, right? We wanna learn the lessons of whatever whatever the past decisions are, and then apply the principles to the, to the current uh, positions.